Scott, I'm Pastor James McAbee of Lighthouse Worship Center here in Beaumont, Texas. It's uh, Today is December the 19th, 2011, so you can sort of have an update on how old or how new this video is. We also have a website at www.lighthouse-worshipcenter.com. I want to talk to you today about a subject that uh, it's an advanced level study something Christians hardly even know about their own selves. That's the Holy Trinity. You know, Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, how these three are one and all of them are God. And Christians are being taken to school on this situation. It's why the Muslim movement is growing very big because a lot of Christians can't, or people can't get past how Jesus is God in the flesh. If Jesus was talking to God, then how is he God? I mean, why would he need to talk to God if he was God himself? And then the Holy Ghost indwelling the people, which is his believers, which is the third head of the Godhead Trinity indwelling you. I often tell people your prayers don't have to go above the ceiling. They don't even have to go above your nose because the Holy Ghost is inside of you and indwelling you. I think it's very important we know about this study. You're going to need to get your Bible. You may need to re listen to this uh, video several times because it's a s issue that's confusing people and it's plain in the sight uh, of the Bible why there's a holy trinity. Basically the trinity is a plan of redemption within its own self on the manifold wisdom of God and we're going to get into that. But Muslims are leading people astray saying hey there's only one God and if you do more good then there is bad, and that scale weighs up at the end of time. You're going to make it to those pearly gates, and you know that all seems like it makes sense. But this goes back further than what you think. Uh, this goes way back, and let me teach you, tell you this: the Bible teaches in Mark the twelfth chapter, verse twenty-nine. Jesus even said himself, "The first commandment is this: Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God." 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. The scripture teaches that Jesus made this earth. Well, if Jesus made this earth, he was born into this earth, so how was he the one that made the earth? I'm going to answer these questions. Ephesians 3, 9 says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Did you get that? He created all things by Jesus Christ. Acts 20 verse 28 says the blood of Jesus was the blood of God. Listen to this. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Tell my God is purchased with his own blood. First John 5 and 7 says, For there is three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I'm going to explain to you this uh, on this blog, or vlog, V-L-O-G, video blog, how the three are one. In eternity past, Jesus was called God the Word. In an eternity past, Present and future, he's called God the Son. Listen to this. Genesis 1.26 says this, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over the creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. How is Jesus God? Now listen to this. This is in the beginning. God said, Let us make man our image. Who was he talking about? God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Ghost right there. He said, let us make man in our image. Us in our image. Those three there. It also says John 1, the first chapter, the Gospel of John. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was, was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him. I'm talking about by the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. 
in him was life, and the life was the light of man. If you look at that word life up there in the Greek, it means zoe. It means eternal life, God's kind of life, life sustaining life. And what happened in the beginning of time, it says right here, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. The word was God indicating he can take his word, put it somewhere else, and it will work just as one and the same. You can do the same thing with your word. Take, for instance, the communication system went out here in the United States. You had to get a message over to your husband or wife in Florida or in California. Let's say the United States Postal Service was still running. You can make a record and say, honey, while you're over there on vacation, could you bring me back one of those souvenir shirts? Or get one of those nice uh, uh, this or that. Or, or bring back this that I usually get while I go. And you know your word will work one and the same. Your husband or wife will get that message, play that tape, and it'll work. The same way God's word worked in Jesus. But see, there was a problem that happened in the beginning of time. In the beginning of time, God made Adam. Adam shined from the outside in. He didn't even know he was naked when he created us. We didn't even have to wear clothes. And God gave Adam one commandment. And see, there was an enemy here on earth by the name of Satan. He exalted himself for higher than God was cast down from heaven. And what happened was he was cast down here to this earth, indwelling this earth, inhabiting this earth, along with Adam. God gave it to Adam to lord over and even lord over Satan. It was down here, that sly cunning thing, him. And he was down here and he had a plan to try to overthrow God. He wanted to get back at God. Now you need to listen sharply at these things. Let me fix my cuff here. It's getting a little hot under the collar there. Adam was spiritually alive. Satan lost his anointing. He was spiritually the dead. The Bible said he is being consumed. And what happened with Satan was he knew he was on a timetable and he wanted to take man to hell with him and get back at God. And he thought he could put the light out in God by getting to God through man's creation, through God's creation, man. So what happened was when God created Adam, the light shined from the outside in. He didn't even know he was naked. Remember when he sinned, it said he partook of the fruit. And what that fruit is, we don't know. A lot of people say it's an apple is what the media puts on there, but it doesn't say. But what happened was, and the reason why Satan can't get born again or get the light cut back on in him, it says because Satan used the anointing of God to create iniquity. The Bible says iniquity was found in in him. Iniquity was found in him. He used the anointing of God. Therefore, the light will never be cut back on him. He's spiritually dead. And so he tried to do the same thing with Adam that Satan did with God. He broke God's word. And when he broke God's word, he was cast down. Light was cut off in him. And oh, when you lose that light, oh, it's like death all inside of you. That's why when Jesus, remember when Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He took upon him the sin of man. He took upon him spiritual death and we're going to get into that. But now follow me now. Adam didn't do, he didn't slug God in the face. What did he do? He broke God's word. The communication between heaven and earth, the parent and the child was disconnected. There was no communication link. God was on the outside looking in. You may say, well, why couldn't God just say, King's X on Adam, erase him, get rid of him, start over with a new creation. He couldn't. He gave this creation to Adam, to, to, to Lord over Satan, Lord, have dominion over this land. And when he broke the word, he gave Satan, which was spiritually dead here, he become the God of this world. Because he become Lord over Adam, there was no connection between God and man. Are you getting? Are you following this here? And then when there was no connection, no communication, he couldn't even talk to Adam on a spiritual level. He had to talk to him on a mental level, teach him to clothe himself, which a moment before that, he didn't even know he was naked. Remember when God said, where are you? He said, I'm 
ran because I knew I was naked. He said, how did you know you was naked? He couldn't even see he was naked. Let me take a coffee break here. Now let's take it back to God in the beginning. His word is one. You can't separate God and his word. They are the same. So God had to have him make a plan. So he thought he could get God to break his word. So he couldn't go back to the dust of the earth. The dust of the earth become cursed. When he broke God's word, even this planet became cursed. If you lead over in Romans, it says even the world is can't wait for the redemption. Even the creation can't wait to be redeemed its own self. There's a curse put on it too because of Adam's transgression. Not only was life taken from Adam, it was taken from this earth. That's why God told Adam, said, you're going to have to till with the sweat of the brow of your eye to make it work. You know, it used to be you could just speak to this land. And it I mean, just creation happened is the way it was originally meant to happen. Oh, that's powerful stuff, preacher. Remember, Jesus even got mad at the twig tree because it wasn't producing, you know, things that he felt like it should be doing within its proper season. See, it used to be that fruit would produce all year long. I'm preaching some heavy stuff here. I'm telling you some good stuff here, and I ain't preaching. I'm teaching here. Now, get back with me now. God had to go back and redo back over and do to Satan what Adam did to Abraham. But see, he couldn't let Satan know what he was doing because the whole plan would be foiled. So he had to go to this guy by the name of Abraham and make a covenant with him. See, God's a covenant-making God. And he said, you know, he said, I've got a seed coming. And if you go over into Genesis, he said that my seed should put his heel on your head. He had to go to Abraham and said, I've got a man coming that I'm going to have to funnel back into this earth. And he's going to walk out the original plan that I had with Adam in the first place. And he said, hold this for me. He said, if you'll hold this for me. He said, one day he'll come. He said, when he does, said, uh, said he's going to fulfill all things. And so, now listen to this now. Let me get back to my notes here. I just sort of got, got ahead of myself here about what he did with Adam. Now, I've already said words were the communication tools between spirit beings and they couldn't even communicate no more. God was on the outside looking in. And Satan thought that he could get God to break his own word. See, God abides by the laws of the land. If he was here, he would do by every law that was according to here on the land. If the speed limit says 55, he would do it. And Satan thought he'd get God to lie and go back on his word and put the light out in God. And the Bible says Satan's the father of of all liars. He thought he'd subordinate God to his own self. But see, the idiots didn't realize he was dealing with God. Now follow with me now about this thing with Abraham. If we are only speaking in the natural without the help of the Holy Ghost, we're not connecting to God. That's why God had to get a spiritual alive man back into this earth to cause a thing called redemption. He had to get spiritual life back to us. But every man born after the kind of Adam, born after the flesh of man, was created to be born spiritually dead. That's what the Bible says, that which of the flesh is flesh. That which is of the spirit is spirit. Every spirit created after the birth of Adam was created spiritually dead. There was no connection in the word link between God and man. In the Old Testament, man was spiritually dead. Now, keep following with me now. And I'm going to get back to this thing about the covenant of Abraham. See, God and heaven were created or connected by words. And the problem was there wasn't a man down there connecting him back. And so what God had to do was, through the ages, through the times, he uh, put his seed, his word, into a virgin woman. See, this was not the blood. This was not the blood of, uh, of, of Joseph there. See, the Holy Ghost come upon her, and she miraculously became pregnant. See, if it was the seed of man, 
what would happen was it would have been another spiritually dead man. So what happened was the Word of God was born in the flesh. See, God's got a man back down here in the earth. It can connect back. Spiritual life. See, if you ain't got God on the inside of you or ask God into your life, you're spiritually dead. And there's only one place designed for you to go once you take your last breath. And that's called a spiritual prison called hell that was designed for Satan. And he figured out a way to take man there with him. Now keep following with me here. We're going to get back to this thing about Abraham. So here's God's problem. He, he's got to get the power word back into the earth. It has to be a word filled with power and received by a man to take the dominion with the power. Now, if I've got you up to the speed about him making a covenant with Abraham, and through the years, and through the line, it came through Abraham's generation, and Jesus Christ was born. And now you're thinking, well, what is all this stuff about why we got to accept Jesus? How was Jesus God? Jesus was 100% man. He was also 100% God. See, God had to be born of this earth. Flesh is made here. Flesh was born here. He had to combat and take on Satan in the realm of man, which Adam failed in the first place. See, he had to walk out the covenant and the word that Adam was supposed to do and keep that word alive and not break his word, which Adam did. But see, they did not know taking Jesus into hell what happened was they wanted to get that word out. They figured, oh, let's kill Jesus. The Bible says if they had known, so they would not have even crucify the Lord, Lord of glory. And so here's the problem. Every man, because of what Adam did, was going to suffer the penalty for it. And there had to be a, a price to be paid. And it had to be, we had to be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Now here's what happened. Jesus had done no sin. You see, Jesus went up on that cross and died, and Satan took him illegally. He was made to be sin. He had done no wrong. He was spiritually alive, and he was taken into hell. And on those grounds, because of that, the Word of God indwelt, incarnated inside of a man. You see, are you getting anything out of this, how the two... The word stormed into hell. And because he took him illegally, Jesus was made to be sin, had done no wrong. What happened was hell had to loose him. Jesus said, that's it. Loose. God said, loose him. He's done no wrong. After three days of pain, the, the, the punishment for what Adam had done, there was penalty paid. And if you accept what Jesus Christ had done, the plan of redemption to get light cut back on in the inside of you, you'll live forever with your Father God. Now see, you're going to live forever. You're an eternal being whether you know it or not. You see, the only thing is if once you take your last breath, you're either going to live with your Father Satan for eternity or if you ask God to come into your heart and forgive your sins, which every person born after Adam spiritually dead see you got to go back further than what you know of you only know about going back to the your kindergarten years pushing kids off the swings and throwing snowballs and mud pies you got to go back see this world's a mirage what you see it goes back further than that it goes back as far as the Adam and how there was a separation spiritual death down to every human being until now but see, because God put his word forth. Remember I said earlier how you can take a recording, send it to somebody, and it'll work? The same way God did with his word is living and powerful. See, his word's alive. Words create. That's what it was inside of Jesus. It was alive. He was the word of God. No longer is he called God the word, but he's called God the son. And the three are one. And he's done as much as to give you a seal. He sealed you with the Holy Ghost. Once you get born again, you've got the light cut on on the inside of you. 
on. The Bible says that he has sealed you with the Holy Ghost as a seal for, for the payment for right now until he comes for the, for, for the purchase the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, for what he's purchased, talking about us. See, we're sealed. It's like you paid for something. You got a receipt until it gets here or whatever. And same way with God, until it gets here. It's his receipt. We're paid for. You know, I hope you can take this all in. I know it's spiritual. It was a lot to handle. But if you'll accept this, you'll have life eternal. Cut on the inside. I can tell you this. I've been walking with God for 15 years now. It's not always been a perfect thing. I've had failures. I've had successes. But God peels you like an onion and not like an orange. Lord Jesus, I went through mental problems, spiritual problems, problem, financial problems. See, these are natural things that happen here on this earth. Because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. But God's had to help me out of them. None of us are perfect. Even perfect people use pencils with erasers on them. But I want to tell you that if today you'll pray unto God in Jesus' name. And say, God, I ask you into my heart. And ask you to forgive my sins. And I accept your sacrifice for what Adam had done. His one mistake. See, see. Eve was deceived, Adam was not. As a Christian, we can be, no more are we defeated, but we're deceived. See, we don't live in defeat, but deceit. See, say that prayer I just prayed. God come into my heart, I accept the birth of Jesus on the inside of me. Until you come again, I believe that you've made that sacrifice. In Jesus' name. If you pray that, you'll be alive. No longer will you have to live in defeat. You'll have to live in deceit. The devil will have to trick you that you are not the victor. That you are not the winner. Well, I encourage you to listen to this video over and over again. Because it's things that Christians just don't know. The Muslims make a lot of sense to those. See, the carnal mind can't receive those spiritual things. Muslims are winning people because they say, well, you know, there's only one God. We believe the same thing. And if you do more good than bad, you'll make it to heaven. See, we don't believe that. We believe you accept the sacrifice of Jesus. That perfect word that God used to get you connected back to him and cut light back on the inside of you. I said earlier, we used to shine from the outside in. They couldn't even tell they were naked. Now we shine from the inside out. The inside out. We listened to this over and over. I know it was a lot of meat for you to take in, but it was well worth my time. Look us up on the web. If you're ever in Beaumont, Texas, come by and check us out. God bless you, and uh, I'll be putting some more good stuff up pretty soon.